<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Lucid Nine. Um, so okay, so in the last video, we left off on what appears to be career day in the game. So, um, okay, yeah, I go. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just, it's a, mm, what am I doing? Okay, I'm doing, losing my mind, um, okay, uh, <laughs> can we guess those ways? At teach, what's five plus seven? I would. Okay. Adrian. This is high school, Mr. Akari. Not primary school. You should have mastered that edition by now. But teach! <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Krogane. Smoking is not permitted on campus. And those over. Oh, oh! <laughs> they kinda, they kinda spooked me. Oh, this is like coming out of my way to the that guy at all. <laughs> He's there with that crazy eye and his lips and his fist. <laughs> you ain't the boss of me, kid. Kid, I'm your teacher. You're shorter than me, kid. And that makes you a kid, kid. I want to slap him so hard. Alright, that's it. You're staying after class. You've got the dungeon to serve. Says who? Says you? You couldn't even take a on a disease. What? You got a disease chicken with one claw tied to his tail? First of all, how would you tie claw to its tail. And second of all, who would want to take out a diseased chicken? Because what diseases does it have? Are they transmittable to humans? I wouldn't want to touch that. At all. I should have, probably should have been first of all. Because why would I take out a diseased chicken? And second, how would you tie its claws to its tail? Because, how would it even be able to stand to fight you? I mean, they're not flamingos. Um. That. <laughs> Why can't you be that eloquent down your essays? Teacher! What's, what's wrong? What? Are you crying? Again? What for? Oh, I'm, you're angry at me. I'm sorry. I'm so terrible. I can't. Hey, hey, hey. No, don't cry. No crying. This is a daydream. No crying. Because if you cry, I'm gonna cry. And then there's gonna be... Oh, there, all the people are gonna be crying. And then there's gonna be a mess. And the, the, the people with red eyes and runny noses. And, and no. No. Just no. I'm the no. Oh, no, 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 no emotions. Happy feels. Happy feels when you see something cute and adorable. Or, yeah, yeah, that works for me. Yeah, I don't think I have enough patience to deal with students. I meander down the row of booths, apathetically peering at any that seem mildly entertaining. One man with a remarkably bushy mustache raises his fists in the air. Yelling at the top of his lungs. Do you love Japan? Join the Japanese self-defense force today. Wow. I thought those kinds of diehard patriots only existed on TV. Any man who is able to follow orders can be seen as a hero of Japan. <laughs> yeah, if you're still alive. 
Jesus. Oh. I'm gonna say for a moment. Like a lag. Grenade! Cover it, soldier! What? We can just run away. Jump on that grenade or I'll have you court martial for insubordination. But I'll die! All the better. No! <laughs> I love all the better. Up to it. Yeah, not happening. I turn away from the booth. Everything I see is equally unpromising. You have a knack for cooking. Why not apply to Lion Culinary School? Gather here, engineers, mathematicians, fellow countrymen, the biggest digital corporation in the world, Lamnescape, has opened. Positions open for you. Ooh, that was that, that that company was mentioned earlier in the game. Like, was it in the first episode? I think that was the first episode. Have you always wanted to help the hurting? Join us at the Cumulus Therapy Center and transform the world one life at a time. Quick glance in the direction reveals that I seem to be the only one having trouble. I find Elizabeth in deep conversation with a police officer just a few feet away. Wouldn't have thought her to be the type. Maybe she's sucking up to them so they'll let her off for corporate fraud. That guy's an officer? Okay, he is a very, very young looking officer. Definitely younger than me. Nothing that matters. Meh, I can't really judge her. At least she found something that she's interested in. Me, on the other hand, well, I have nothing. What's up? Can't find your life's calling? Now who? Now who? What? I turn to the source of the voice. Of the voice. A scraggly man slumped against a rickety folding chair. A worn beanie glopped on his head and a threadbare trench coat thrown over his shoulders. Where is he? A private eye? A gumshoe? There's no sign on his boots. Is Hobo a legitimate career? Ha! Youngster these days. Wait, no, he's an old guy. Ha! Youngster these days. You hold your own, you hold your future in your own hands and you don't even know what to do with it. You're lucky, you know. There was a time when people didn't have the luxury of choosing their career. Seems like southern. <laughs> On second glance, I notice that there are several rolling racks of books settled in the back of the booth. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to their genre. Science fiction, mystery, fantasy, young adult. But they're all under the same name. Are you... a writer? He smiles when I ask him this. Heh, <laughs> what? Surprised? Who do you think I was? An adventurer? A low-trotter? A homeless guy, actually. He throws back at his laughs. You've got a lot. I can't wait to read your stories. Somehow I don't think that being a writer would fit me. Oh, somebody help me. Whatever shall I do? We are not generic damsel in distress. I am the hero. I lost the previous battle, so this is the hero Roy match where I am guaranteed to win. How fortunate! After you win this final battle, I shall sub. <laughs> I shall <should jab. laughs> I can't talk. I shall bestow you with an obligatory smooch of victory. Hey. You can't just ignore the villain. I got your girl, Yama. Oh, spare us with your evil gloating. It'll only lead to your downfall. But, but, I gotta. Give a motive right so that we understand your identity as a tragic villain. Nah, I'll just put that as a footnote. Okay, I tire of this needless banter. I've actually written the princess's backstory so that she's a Badass in distress. 
What? But you didn't even foreshadow that. Too bad, I need to move the plot forward. Yeah! <laughs> that sounds a little, a little kind of like a chipmunk. Yeah! That sounds... No! It's crunchy. Yeah, no, I don't think I can come up with original material. That's why you just rip off real life, you know? Um, thanks, but no thanks. He shrugs apathetically as I walk away. A small group of nearby students catches my eye. They're gathered in front of a man in a long sleeping lab coat. Although his voice is placid, there lies an undercurrent of power in every word he says. Life is a fragile thing. There is an unspeakable number of ways for the human body to fail, and even more for it to be broken. Death was accepted as a natural part of life, a natural stage in the cycle of this world. But it doesn't have to be that way. The man in the lab co brightens as students break into hurried whispers. Through research, we can create medicine that fights diseases and treats disorders, extending our lives exponentially, and maybe indefinitely. Ah, so he's a medical researcher. He fixes his gaze on each student in the each, each individual in the crowd, not in a hostile manner, but certainly in an unnerving one. A day may come when we can defy death. His eyes land on me. I shrivel backwards and sneak away. <laughs> no. The intelligent arc of his brow and the commanding line of his jaw shifts slightly as he examines me. I feel frozen beneath his piercing gaze. It isn't exactly that comfortable, just strange. Eventually he turns away, adjusting the golden glasses that are settled on the bridge of his nose. Those aren't golden. Those are quite definitely like black or gray brown. Like gray, because they're like the same color as his hair. If you seek to make a lasting influence on the <laughs> if you seek to make a lasting influence on the world, join us at Way Forward Pharmaceuticals in the Research Division. Together, we can accomplish the impossible and prevent the inevitable. The crowd of students breaks into applause, their faces agape in wonder. I can only scoff. No one can define that. Can defy that. Anyone who thinks otherwise is just delusional. As I turn away from the way forward booth, PA hums to life. Okay. Attention students. Mayor Inori will be speaking at the center stage in five minutes. Students around me gasp audibly, breaking into frantic whispers. Mayor Inori. Oh, wait. Mayor Inori? Here? In person? Our school's important, you know. Why wouldn't he come? Come on, let's get a good spot. I follow the massive throng of students gathering around the courtyard's center stage. Sure enough. Masaru Inori, the ever-popular mayor of Isamu, is in the flesh. He gives the students a cordial wave from behind an impenetrable line of security guards. Okay, that note is just... Just listen to the PA voice. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ooh, I think I like this guy. You know, back in my day, when dinosaurs were on the earth, 
Let's extract the laugh from the crowd. We always ditch Gerida. We'd pop over to GFC. We should have seen it, should have seen it before it was renovated. And stuff ourselves in wings. They were only double S's at the time. Shows you how far we've come as a society, eh? The crowd chuckles again. Among them I catch the distinct tint of Elizabeth's laughter. <laughs> as usual, she's eagerly jotting notes on her phone, hanging on to the mayor's every word. The brunette girl who's always around Elizabeth is also next to her. Surprisingly, she seems equally engrossed in the speech. And yes, I hated career day. Thought it was a waste of time. Thought they were restraining me at a time when all I wanted to do was explore myself. Who I was. Who I wanted to be. Yeah, that makes a lot of noise. But later, I realized that I was thinking about career day in the completely wrong way. It wasn't about deciding my future. It was about exploring possibilities. He allows a moment of thoughtful silence before he continues. The truth is, you'll probably change careers multiple times in your life. In fact, the average number of job changes is estimated to be 15 times. Wow, a lot of... That's, 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 that's a lot of people happen between jobs, if that's an accurate estimate. Wow. You could be in med school all your life, but have experience in construction, woodworking, design, architecture, statistics, engineering, maybe even ostrich babysitting or bicycle fishing. Okay, I, I could see bicycle fishing, but ostrich babysitting. Only the parents are nowhere around, and like, rock behind thick, thick wire cage doors. Because they will stomp you to death. At least that's what I mean. They, they, they like, they like, they like step on the... They're really very, very big birds. And they can squish you very, very easily. And that would be most unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Elizabeth smiles under her hand as the students laugh like a perfectly timed track. But as vast as the future is, you know what you don't want to do. You don't want to be hurt. You don't want to go each day full of insecurities, doubts, fears. You don't want to be lied to or backstabbed or treated like a fake. I won't lie to you. It's a nasty world out there. Okay, I like this guy. I really do. But I think that we can all agree that regardless of who we are or where we're from, we each have an important part to play in the safety of this country. So go on, explore. You guys are bright. And hey, you guys are in a better spot than I was. I thought I'd like nothing more than to become an anthropologist. Not that I even know what that meant at the time. It just sounded cool. This parting sentence elicits another laugh as he steps off the stage. Offering a final way, the students erupt into cheers in response. I quickly shuffle away from the crowd before the noise overwhelms me. I don't want to like this guy. Heck, I don't want to like any politician, but he seems to be less evil than the others are seeing. Furthermore, he made a good speech. He came across intelligent, but genuine. Two major opposites of politics. Maybe I'll vote in his re-election. Maybe. Hello, stranger. Oh. Ah, that's her. Hey, Mickey. I abruptly stopped in my tracks, probably taking in what she's wearing. While you're dressed up, which is putting lightly, she's draped in a silken kimono that ripples around her finger like water. Hair inset with a minimalistic ribbon and crystal pin. She could own the red carpet. Or a throne, even with that outfit. Pretty, my mind supplies unhelpfully. I quickly grind that part of my mind to dust. That's all you have to say? Well, what were you expecting? Poetry? Oh, dearest, you liken yourself to Starlight. 
with eyes like the moon and a mouth like the purest golden flame the sun e'er did see. <laughs> she promptly slaps me on the black back. Very funny, Shakespeare too. Or Shakespeare the second, I should say. Oh well, I am impressed. Your recitation was pretty decent. I feel like she's insulting me, but she seemed, generally seems shocked. So what brings you here? Do you want to become a model? Oh, what? Oh, no need, no need to be embarrassed. Male models are hardly anything new. However, they do tend to be physically fit. Do you happen to have a six-pack? I'll pretend I heard none of that. What makes you think I'd ever, I would ever want to be a model? You're standing by my company's booth. We are a modeling company. Surprised, I cast a quick glance behind her. Sure enough, a large banner reads Lotus Modeling, above a tank with striking photo spreads. Oh, we get it, aren't the lotuses on our kimono? Like, that is a kimono, right? Yeah, that's a kimono, because it's like the long sleeves. Hence the kimono, I assume. Haha, <laughs> that answers that question. You assume correctly. So where's Rui? I haven't seen her all day. Ooh, that awkward moment, Lynn. Eh, really? That, that's funny. She attended the school, right? Well, of course she does. She does, she does. So you've seen her today? Why? Well, yeah. Maybe. You didn't tell her about me? Hello, social drama. I missed you. Not. How can I word this delicately? Or better yet, avoid it completely. Uh, you should probably be getting back to your job. I have my eye on you, Yama. Do you really think I can't tell when you're lying? I believe in my ability to run away. <laughs> Always the same, I see. I've made a mental note to harass you about it later. Until then, Yama. And she floats back to her booth, reading any curious glances with an effortless smile. A model. Her job is modeling. Somehow I find that a little underwhelming. I almost expected her to be involved in something drastic, like the Secret Service, or the film industry, or even. The Olympics. Uh, okay. But modeling, where you pose and change and smile for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. <gasps> Adventurous, stubborn, meeky? It doesn't seem to fit her. Whatever. I guess it's none of my business anyway. It's time to see Mr. Yota. This time he opens the door as soon as I knock. I must have caught him at a good time. Welcome, Nishimoto. We've been expecting you. We, 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 who's we? He cackles maniacally and taps his fingers and tips together. <laughs> you should have turned in your chair while stroking a cat. Bah, everyone's a critic. Would you rather have been left standing outside in the cold? Outside? I'd be in the hallway. You seem awfully eager to prove your mentor wrong, boy. Well, er, whether I prove it or not, it's still wrong, right? Ah, yes. But that would never fly in a court of law, you see. Imagine it. I declare the defendant guilty, because from a metaphysical standpoint, it is true, even if we have no episode Epistemological link of snowing cell. Epistemological link? I just lost you. Pretty sure he lost us all, man. I guess that a lot. I'm too tired to do the voices. Except the girl voices. 
We're watching the reason because it looks like it's going up. The guy watches it hard because I put down. <sighs> oh wait, did I read that? Oh no, I didn't read that. Fudge. I have no idea what that's called. Great. Accidentally, I slide into the nearest couch. Into. I'm gonna slide in you. Are you wiggling under the cushions to hide? I've always seen Mr. Ryota as an intelligent man, even if laid back, but I've never actually well understood. <laughs> well, not, un not understood him. I wonder how much brain mass he's hiding behind that cheery facade. So, the new transfer student, Masaki Kazehaya. Ha, yeah, yeah, Haya. Haya, Haya. Yeah. I'm gonna say Haya. Masaki Kazehaya. Kazehaya. I hope you don't mind. I did a little look on her. You can do that. Well, there's no explicit rules saying I can't use the confidential databases. I'm pretty sure there, that there is. Nope. I may be faculty, but I'm not a teacher. It's only teacher that teachers have to request special permission. Ooh. I checked. <laughs> he just checked the loopholes. Something feels wrong about this. What did you find out? Well, if I tell you, then that's a solid breach of confidentiality. Then why did you look? Why are you telling me that you looked? Ooh, I don't want to go to jail yet. The food's too good here. Then they must have a master chef in that cafeteria if the food is good. Because I have yet to be to a cafeteria that had good food. <sighs> Mr. Yota, I really worry about you sometimes. And this is me talking. So instead, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter, Yana. How did you two meet? And you mentioned that she left. Yeah. I may or may not have mentioned that. I close my eyes, letting the ever constant hum of the air conditioner calm my nerves. Then I start talking. It's practically subconscious. My mouth dutifully repeats the train of thought running through my mind. Everything is calm, clear, slow. Therapy, something that I've gotten used to over the years. So I easily turn my brain to the topic of interest. Masaki Kazahaya. Kaze. Kaze. Kazehaya. I met her when I was young. Not too young. A baby still forming thought patterns and ideas about the world, but young enough to be highly impressionable. Ooh! Does it move? No, it doesn't move. It's kind of hard for me to move because some of the earlier stuff did. This is pretty. It's like I've tried, and it's like I have a hard time with perspective stuff like that. It's like getting the angles and stuff right, and colors and all that insane detail work that I lose patience for. <laughs> it had been on a day when I thought nothing could make me smile. Not the vibrant lantern strewn between the roofs of the multicolored booths. Not the festive rhythm of the taiko drummers, or Taiko? Taiko? I've actually never heard that one pronounced, so I'm... Taiko. Taiko. Okay. Any of my watchers that knows Japanese... Let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. Because I, you know, I, I've 
watched a lot of anime and I've really been interested in, you know, learning Japanese, but... I never see the time for anything. Um, not the festive rhythm of the taiko drummers, urging on the parade of light-bearing dancers. Not the stands in which a variety of nutritionally questionable foods were being served. Not even Rui. Rui, who dragged me out of the house despite my best efforts to stay miserable. It was only around an hour into the festival, but I was ready to go. When Rui went to the bathroom, I seriously considered ditching her and going back to my room. Apparently, I was scowling deeply at that. I didn't know it until a passing girl suddenly stopped in front of me. Annoying girl. <laughs> does your face always, does your face always look like that? To say the least, I didn't help my foul mood. I glared up at her. She was pretty. Well, that was the first thought in my head. That instinctive spark of appreciation whenever a guy sees a pretty girl. No matter how much he wants to feel otherwise. Her hair was braided back into an elegant half do. Light ebony curls framing her porcelain face. Big eyes. Long lashes. Pointed chin. The kind of traditional beauty you might see in a kimono commercial. Of course, the first spark of interest was immediately overridden by the indignance that an only an eight-year-old boy could feel. What are you looking at? Don't look so grumpy. You should be celebrating. She didn't know anything, of course. Not until a few months later. Festivals are stupid. They are not. Well, why? There isn't even a reason to celebrate. The girl's face twisted into something resembling anger. It looked strange on her face, like a guinea pig attempting to seem menacing. You don't even know what the festival is about, do you? Of course I didn't, but I wasn't about to admit that. Of course I do. Of course I do. Uh, oh yeah, what's it about? Well, you make lanterns. Uh-huh, and? I fisted my hands at her in condescending tone. You write wishes on them and stuff. Wrong. I am not. Yeah, you are. You don't write wish you don't write wishes. You write what you want to tell good people. Yeah. Ridiculous, I should have said. Why would I even want to talk to dead people? I didn't mock it. I couldn't mock it. Dead people? Yep. I could write a message to Auntie on this lantern and she'd see it. How do you know that? Haven't you heard the story? No, I hadn't. But my eight-year-old pride prevented me from saying that, of course. Thankfully, the girl took my silence as confusion. Well, uh, I'm running over. I'm going to cut this here. So, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button. I will see y'all in the next video. Until next time!